My smartphone is one of my most personal possessions. Until now, I thought my secret code was enough to protect it. I don't want to see it fall into the hands of a stranger, or frankly, even the people I'm close to. It has my photos, my emails, my texts, my appointments, my contacts, even the secret recipe for my favorite soup. If somebody collects four unique location data points from you, they can 98% uh, of the time actually identify you personally. My phone and your phone is going to be different uh, because our patterns of usage are totally different. So only I go to my home, my office, and like the same coffee shop every day. And so even though those data points on their own can be described as anonymous, in fact, the totality of the data is not anonymous. We both have apps that know when we're active and for how long, how we engage with those things. That leaves a trace. The number of apps that I have on my phone versus the number of apps that you have on your phone, that also leaves a trace. If your city is constantly being filmed and sensors are tracking you as you walk around with your mobile phone, are you more or less likely to attend a protest? Are you more or less likely to go into the street and have your voice heard about something that might be oppositional to your government? And one of the things that happened in the Ukraine earlier this year during a peaceful protest is that thousands of people walking in the street and peaceful protest get the same text message that said, you have been registered as an illegal participant in a street protest. Now, that's a pretty terrifying thing to get because what it means is that, first of all, you are being tracked, you are being observed, and that your participation has been recorded. How does that change the way you might want to engage in protest in future? That has a serious, or has the, at least the risk of being a serious chilling effect. What are the things where having some kind of anonymity, or at least some kind of ability to not permanently be recorded, what do we lose if we give that up? The more my applications know me, the better they work. This is exactly what Rand Hindi says, France's leading thinker on data collection. Pour anticiper ce genre de besoin, ce qu'on va faire, c'est qu'on va prendre par exemple la donnée de géocalisation, à partir de laquelle on va arriver à déterminer les habitudes de vie des gens, ainsi que les endroits où ils sont en ce moment. On va croiser ça avec des données, par exemple, d'accéléromètre, pour comprendre que d'habitude, quand quelqu'un va en rendez-vous, il y va en taxi, et donc c'est plus important de lui proposer un taxi qu'autre chose. En fait, l'accéléromètre permet de prédire le mode de transport. Mais on va aussi prendre des informations du calendrier. Donc on va commencer à faire de l'analyse de langage naturel sur le calendrier pour comprendre que quand on dit « rendez-vous avec Olivier », qu'il s'agit du Olivier de telle entreprise et donc que du coup l'adresse qu'on n'aura pas mis dans son événement sera à tel endroit. Et par-dessus ça, on va aussi regarder par exemple les emails et pourquoi pas les réseaux sociaux. Et c'est en croisant toutes ces données-là avec des données environnementales euh, comme la météo, les informations de transport, qu'on va permettre en fait de recréer le contexte dans lequel se trouve l'individu. Et à partir de ce contexte, on peut prédire ses intentions. Can you imagine if we let the police spy on us the way our phones do? I tried almost every possible way to get out of mobile phone tracking. I set up a fake name, I got a fake uh, a phone under that fake name so that I could carry a phone that wasn't attached to my identity. Um, but I found that basically I go to the same places and I make all the same calls, so ultimately the fake identity wasn't masking that much because in fact what's being tracked is my behavior more than my identity, right? The behavior is my tell. And so therefore that was impossible to conceal if I wanted to use a phone because the phone is constantly transmitting to all sorts of people and I don't have an ability to sort of say, oh yes to this connection and no to that one. It's sort of a binary on off. The phone is either on and is transmitting to all these people who I can't control, or it's off and I can't get any calls. And um, the problem is I am a mother, I have two children, and I kind of need to be reachable. If you want to have a phone in today's world, which is basically not optional, um, you have to be tracked and you don't have a lot of opportunities to turn it off. And so that's why it's not about personal choice. It's not that I made the choice to give up my privacy. It's that we as a society have not set any limits on the type of tracking that can happen. And so what we see is this battle between the industries over who can track us. And the sad thing is that um, we as citizens, there doesn't seem to be a proposal like, hey, how about nobody? <laughs> With everything our phones know about us, it seems like the future belongs to big data which is exactly what we'll explore in the next episode of Do Not Track. See you later. You know that game, Would You Rather? Would you rather have two foam arms or be constantly followed everywhere by tiny ducklings? 